Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, Studio Arts and Glass, and January Appraisals and Liquidations. Joining Brad and I this morning is our guest, Serene Zawari Krishuna, registered and licensed dietitian and weight management dietitian at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital. Good morning, Serene, and welcome to the show, finally. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, nice to have you back. All right. Holiday weight gain is a common concern for many adults, and holiday parties and transitions may encourage overeating, sedentary behavior, and consumption of calorie-rich foods. In fact, between mid-November and mid-January, adults gain an average of one to five pounds. Eek. That may not seem like a lot, but most people don't lose this extra weight. Therefore, holidays, no matter the time of year, may be one of the biggest contributors to your total annual weight gain. That said, holiday weight gain is not inevitable. This morning, we're going to talk with Serene to get some tips and wisdom for healthy eating during the holidays. We'd like to remind our listeners that today's program is also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. So, Serene, welcome back to the show. It's always nice to have you on the show. It's always um, fun to be here. <laughs> well, we were hoping it was going to come on today. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. For listeners who might not know you, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital. I am the program coordinator and dietitian at the hospital in the weight management department. So I see patients who are interested in losing weight or maintaining the weight that they've lost or kind of wanting to learn how to eat healthier to maintain a healthy weight. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and I, I really enjoy, I absolutely love what I do. I've been there for over five years now in this role, and it's just a blast. Does the food preparation in the hospital, you, you know, for their cafeteria, do, do they consult with you or do they have their own dietitians? They have actually pretty, um, pretty good restrictions now that the Cleveland Clinic has taken over our hospital that the food has to follow a certain criteria, a certain guideline. It can't have this much of saturated fat. It can't have this mm -hmm. much sodium. So it is pretty healthy, which is the nice thing. So that's um, the transition that they've been working on lately, getting all of their foods uh, to align with Cleveland Clinic's mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you recently won an award for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Tell us about the award. Yeah. So I just won an award, which I was pretty excited about. Um, it is an Excellence in Emerging Practice Award. So it's for a dietitian who's been working less than 10 years, who has um, you know, made improvements in the field and has um, you know, demonstrated good work and helping patients. So I was pretty excited to win that award. Mm. That's cool. Congratulations on your award. That's fabulous. Thank you. You've been working with the folks living in the area wanting to lose weight for over five years. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that you're our local weight loss guru. Tell us why now <laughs> and the ongoing pandemic more than ever overweight plays such a big role in our health. It does. It really does. When we carry extra weight, we increase our risk of developing other comorbidities like high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And what we're seeing is that you know, more and more, a lot of these, um, these issues are becoming a higher risk of developing, you know, complications with COVID, unfortunately. So we want to get people healthy. Um, what I have seen, you know, people coming and starting my program since the beginning of the pandemic, what I have seen is that 90% of my new patients that have come on board since March 2020, 90% of them have said they have gained at least 10 pounds, if not more during this um, time, you know, the stay at home and kind of different time of our life with this pandemic. Um, so what we're seeing, you know, is increased weight, you have increased pressure in your abdomen section, it's a little bit harder to breathe if you do get COVID. So we want to make sure people stay super healthy. Um, you know, if you ever heard of the freshman 15, I have a couple patients that come in, they joke around, they say, oh, I gained the COVID-19. <laughs> in regards to their weight. Great. <laughs> so there's, there's some humor there, which is good. But we definitely, um, you know, we see that the less weight that people carry, the less extra weight, the easier it is for them to breathe, the easier it is for them to move around, um, the better the lung capacity in that regard. So 
it, it really does make a difference. You know, I was working with an orthopedic doctor and he was telling his patients for every pound of weight um, extra that you carry, it's equivalent to four pounds of pressure on your joint. Mm. So it makes a big difference. You know, if you do gain that COVID-19, you're looking at equivalent to 75 pounds of pressure right on your joints. So it kind of gets harder to move around. So we just want everyone to be healthy so that way they can, you know, make it through this pandemic time healthy and fight off, um, you know, God forbid if they do develop COVID. Do we have any national statistics on um, this corona period of time on how much weight the average person has uh, put on or would that be too I, hard to? I haven't seen anything. I'm sure that they're working on it. I haven't seen anything, um, but I'm just kind of going off of whatever my patients, when they come in, I have them fill out a questionnaire and it does ask about you know, how, how much weight you've gained in the last year. And then I always kind of follow up with, well, do you feel like it's related to COVID? You know, tell me more about that. And a lot of it's kind of like, yeah, you know, we've been home, we're not out. Mm. Some people are kind of a little fearful of going out and about. So it's definitely an adjustment for them. Well, I was thinking about judging from the amount of restaurants that have closed. I'm thinking, you know, um, people aren't going out and fasting and not fasting, but going out and choking down a lot of food and drinking and all that sort of thing. And, yeah. and I was thinking it was going to kind of be the reverse. That's uh, a, yeah, you're right. That's what we were hoping. I think a lot of it has to do with nerves and anxiety and it's uh, more of a coping mechanism that we're seeing. Hmm. Well, you know, so many of them have closed and so many of them have shorter hours and so many of them, you know, <laughs> don't have don't have several shifts uh, in, the, in the days past we used to have the restaurants had these two or three turnovers you know every evening it just yeah. doesn't seem to be that way so yeah. anymore here we it's do for, times, definitely. We, we do for a break brad no okay no um, keep going. okay so let's talk about holiday eating okay and we and i chatted before the you know the show came on the air and i thought it was an interesting thanksgiving for you compared to what <laughs> mine was <laughs> as far as eating goes okay but uh okay so when it comes to christmas dinners how the heck do we eat a bounce i mean this food laying all over the place desserts all over everywhere you know yeah. how the heck do we, do we not my biggest advice is to make <laughs> sure you have vegetables. And I, I always like to clarify what I mean when I say vegetables. I mean non-starchy vegetables. And those would be like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, mm. anything like that. A lot of times people um, you know, assume that I'm saying corn, peas, those kinds of things. But those are starchy vegetables. Yeah. So those have a lot of carbs. It's almost like equivalent to like mm. potato or rice. Um, in regards to the carbohydrates. So I'm talking about those non-starchy vegetables. So we want you to load up on that. That's going to help balance your meal. It's very easy to have your protein and then kind of load up on multiple carbohydrates, your potatoes, you know, your rice, anything like that. So mm -hmm. if you incorporate half your plate vegetables, it does really help increase the fiber to help you feel fuller for longer. And then if you eat your protein and your vegetables first, and then you just save a little bit of room for the carbohydrates last, you tend to get less calories in that way. There's been a big beat up, beat up on broccoli lately. What is the story about that? Have you seen anything about that? I haven't, no. Broccoli it's is not, a big not healthy of for you and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, what is this about? You know? oh, broccoli is a big favorite of ours. It's super healthy. Mm. Um, it has really good nutrients, You know, one mm. of those green vegetables. So mm. we really, really push broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, you know, you don't have to like kale. That's okay. Spinach, lettuce, <laughs> kale, lettuce yeah. all of that. What is kale anyway? I don't even know. <laughs> it's it's a it, it's almost like spinach, but it's thick. It has like a it's like a thick leaf. Okay. And so you actually have to massage it. I think people forget that you have to actually massage the kale to kind of calm it down because it's like so thick and um, like rough. Um, you can cook it, but you can make it into a salad. It's pretty good in salads. What's it taste like? Um, anything you can describe? It has a little bit of a different taste than spinach because spinach is pretty tasteless. Yeah, sure. um, kale has a little bit, but it just kind of tastes like one of those leafy greens. 
like if you get like a you know a mix at the grocery store of like a leafy green mix for salads it kind of just tastes like something that you would find in there okay it's time for our first break you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Flu vaccine along with Moderna and Janssen COVID vaccine are available. Please stop by any of our stores and get vaccinated. No appointment necessary. Okay, we talked a little bit about dinner um, and eating a balanced meals and loading up on those veggies. How about we talk about um, the desserts and the calories that come with that? How do we Everyone's navigate favorite. that? Yeah, did you eat any dessert with your thanksgiving dinner <laughs> if you asked me what i ate for breakfast yesterday i wouldn't even been able to tell you i'm very <laughs> sleep deprived i remember when you brought some stuff to the studio <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm very sleep deprived now i have to think back that i have anything i actually did i made um an apple crisp a healthy version of an apple crisp my daughter and i made it so we sliced up apples and layered the pan with apples and then we did a um a crumble on top. And instead of using any butter, we used an olive oil spread that we just melted and used as butter to replace it. Um, and it was actually pretty delicious. So you can do these substitutes and I've done them before and they really do work. <clears throat> so substituting, you know, healthier alternatives for these higher calorie or higher fat items in our baking does allow us to still have, you know, some of these fun treats that we like, especially over the holidays, but not get as many calories or as many grams of fat within it. So for example, if you use applesauce, you can use that in place of so many things. You can use it in place of oil, in place of eggs, in place of sugar. And my daughter and I, my three-year-old and I did make donuts one day. We made uh, a batter for donuts with applesauce instead of any of the eggs and, um, we used just a small, small, small amount of sugar, and we didn't even really need that amount of sugar because the applesauce, and it was unsweetened applesauce, but it kind of sweetened it enough, and we made Greek yogurt. Uh, we added Greek yogurt to it just to give it a little bit more protein because we weren't putting any of the eggs in, and we baked them, and they were absolutely delicious. So you can do fun things like that, and kids, I encourage people, you know, have your kids join in because it's a blast. They absolutely love mixing the ingredients and it's a great way to teach them, you know, this is um, some good alternatives or these are some healthy foods. And, you know, if you teach them from a young age, like applesauce is common when we bake cakes or Greek yogurt is common when we bake desserts, they're going to be used to that by the time they grow up. What about, have you experimented with stevia at all? I have. Yeah. Okay. Stevia is a really good alternative. Um, it's plant-based. What we see is it doesn't spike somebody's blood sugar as much as sugar does. Um, there's stevia, there's stevia in the raw, there's truvia. Um, truvia makes a liquid that's easier to mix in like when you're, uh, you know, when you're baking or making foods. But I think it's all perfect alternative, honestly, to use. But I'm, I'm a big fan of stevia because it is plant-based and i feel like that's a really good alternative yeah, i've really i've really learned to like it in coffee and tea and you know all yeah. that sort of all that sort of thing yeah and they have the granules and they also have a liquid so that yeah. way you can just kind of use a dropper and put that and in i think the, i coffee. think the liquid's hard to deal with though because if you don't if you don't put it in your spoon and you put it over your cup you know you might get too much or not yeah, enough or yeah. whatever so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how i played the game is you know so that's but anyway true. Yeah, so there's all kinds of recipes out there that you can kind of take, look at, adjust if you're looking to make, you know, a, a healthier alternative for your meals. I mean, if you're baking and your recipe calls for whole eggs, you can actually substitute egg whites. So you would do two egg whites to one whole egg. So if you kind of look online and see recipes, um, you know, kind of using a little bit of those ideas would be good alternatives to use. I suppose we should take, this is a very short period. We're going to take the break now. Is that right, Brad? Um, you're at the bottom of the hour. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. We are talking with Serene Zorari Krishuna about healthy holiday eating. We were just listening to her desserts. i um, not sure I can get there, but anyway, we have a lot more to cover this morning. So let's get back to the show. <laughs> All right, Serene. So the holidays are such a busy time. 
and it's pretty easy to consume more calories than you realize, what can people do to keep their holiday eating maybe more mindful or in check? That's a great question. And one that I do get a lot. I really recommend tracking your intake. Does not have to be on an app. If you, you know, if that's easier, if your phone's always with you, that's perfectly fine. But even writing it down. The reason I'm saying that is because a lot of times, especially through the holidays, we are just so busy. We can very easily mindlessly pick up, you know, a Hershey's kiss and put that in our mouth. Or, you know, it's just a small treat that may be sitting around that we don't even really realize that we had. So if you are telling yourself, okay, I'm going to write everything down, you're going to be more mindful to those extra things that you pick up. Even if you mindlessly do it and you catch yourself in the act like, oh, I'm eating this. I really need to write this down. It's a great way for you to learn your own habits, especially, you know, you're too busy to really pay attention during the day. So if you have your phone with you always, you know, download an app, track it on there. Um, and it's just a way to really learn about your own habits, but then to help you stay on track and really see, okay, I did have too much sugar today, or I didn't have enough protein today. And that will help you learn how to balance your intake a little bit better. Okay. How about, can you talk about how important protein is in meals? Yeah. Protein is super important. I think sometimes people, you know, kind of forget about it a little bit or what some good protein sources are. Protein helps us balance our blood sugar when we consume carbohydrates. It also helps us feel fuller for longer when we eat our protein. We always recommend pairing protein and carbohydrate together. So that way we have those feelings of satiety and fullness. Um, when we don't eat enough protein, that leads to us eating more carbohydrates, which are higher in calories. They can raise our blood sugar if we have too much of them. That can also contribute to weight gain. So protein is really good. I don't want to say filler because your body really needs it, but it's a good filler for your plate and your body really does get nutrients from it. Protein helps promote healing within the body as well. Where, where, does, a, where feel, does a vegetarian get protein? They get protein from plant sources. So there are, um, you know, they, depending on what their preferences are, if they do dairy or not, you know, they'll get, they'll get it from dairy, they'll get it from yogurt, they'll get it from cheese, if they do eat those things. Um, somebody who, you know, is vegan will get it from um, plant-based sources like lentils and beans. Um, so those are really important things. You know, there's a movement to have something called Meatless Monday, where you eat more plant-based on Mondays, just because we see a lot of heart disease in this country and a lot of it's contributed to how we eat and, um, you know, the higher fat meats. So using Mondays as a way to, you know, get away from the, the meats that are a little bit higher in fat and having those um, lean proteins like the lentils, the beans, those kinds of things. Um, it's a really good idea just to incorporate more of those plant-based proteins in our diet. Interesting. What about, um, you know, how much protein do we need to eat? And I qualify that with, I notice when I have a higher protein breakfast, I feel like I can make it to lunch without even thinking yeah. twice about being hungry. Yeah. And often it sets the stage for the day. Whereas if I would, God forbid, have a donut, like you mentioned, I crash yeah. and burn by 1030. So you, I mean, that is a perfect, honestly, a perfect example. And one that I hear a lot. Um, for example, I, I do, I, with my patients, I do meal replacements and I hear this a lot, you know, they're like, oh, I'm just so full. You know, I, I had this, this shake or this bar and I'm just pretty full. Um, you know, I don't feel like I need to eat again, but we really you know, they may go without a lunch because they're just so full and so satisfied. And that's what protein does. It helps fill us up. And like I said before, you need to match it with that carbohydrate. So let's say you still have that donut, but maybe you had a cheese stick. That's going to fill you up a little bit more than if you just had that donut. It's going to hold you over a little bit more. But you're right about, you know, if you do have something like eggs for breakfast, you may, maybe with a slice of whole grain toast, um, when you do have that, it definitely takes you longer to feel like, oh, I need food again, because your body is happy. It's processing that protein. It's, you know, it's getting those good nutrients that it needs to help you, you know, stay more satisfied. Now, how to, how to figure out how much protein you need. So if an average person will take their weight in pounds, divide it by 2.2 to get their weight in kilograms. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you know, an average person, let's say somebody is kind of just, um, you know, they walk a couple of times a week, but they're not, you know, too athletic. 
you would multiply that number that you get by 0.8 or by one. Okay, so if your kilograms is 63 kilograms, that would be 63 grams of protein that you would need a day. Now, how do you divide that up? That's going to be the key. We don't want, you know, 63 grams of protein just to be on the second half of the day. So, Brad, you're right when you say it's so important to have it for breakfast, you feel fuller throughout the day, which is great. You get, you know, better results to get you to lunch. So dividing that between breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then if you have any snacks, like maybe a cheesesteak or a hard boiled egg, that's a great way to do it. You know, you don't want to skip a meal necessarily. You want to divide it between all three of your meals and any snacks just to help give you all your nutrients in the day. And it's not too much for your kidneys to have all your protein too close together. So cheese sticks are good? Low fat you. cheese sticks. Low fat cheese sticks are actually a good protein source. Really? I recommend okay. them. Yeah. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. So, okay, here we are at appetizers. What kind of appetizers are we will be serving before dinner? You're going to see a trend with me. <laughs> we, I'm going to encourage these non-starchy vegetables again. And, you know, whether it's your kids, your grandkids, I definitely encourage you to get kids involved in this. So, okay. you know, if yep. you cut up, <laughs> if if you cut up vegetables <laughs> or if you get a bag of, um, you know, baby carrots, so having the kids arrange that on a plate for you, um, like, you know, for Thanksgiving, for example, I saw so many different pictures of um, people who used an appetizer in the shape of a turkey, and they used a lot of vegetables and maybe like, you know, cut up um, low fat cheese in order to make it look like a turkey, you know, the sliced bell peppers with the turkey's feathers opened up. So I think having those healthy vegetables so that way you don't get too many calories in before your actual meal and too many grams of carbohydrates in is a great way to keep your blood sugar balanced and then also just not over consume calories throughout the holiday. Okay. <laughs> All right. What about alcohol and weight gain? So alcohol is added calories that can definitely cause you to gain weight over the holidays if you consume too much. You know, if you consume in moderation, that's perfectly fine calorie wise, but if you consume too much, that will definitely add calories. And a great way to think about it is if you're wondering, okay, well, how much is it gonna take for me to gain a pound? So 3,500 calories is equivalent to one pound. So let's say every day over the course of a week, you have 500 extra calories. And that could be maybe two alcoholic drinks, just depending on what you have. Okay, so if you have 500 extra calories a day, you multiply that again by the course of seven days a week, that's 3,500 calories, and that is equivalent to one pound. And let's say that's just coming from alcohol. That's not any of the desserts that you're eating, any of the foods that you're eating. So you can see how easily it is for those pounds to add up over the holidays. So we want you just to kind of have it in moderation if you are going to have it. Um, it's hard. Um, a lot of alcohol can have extra sugar. So we want to be a little bit cautious about that as well. Okay. Beer, wine. Um, what do we drink? Okay. Or, or, or a non-alcohol yeah. uh, grape drink or, you know, they're all over the place. So. Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. When something has more sugar, like if it's a sweet wine, let's say that's going to have more sugar than if it's a dry wine. So you kind of have to pick and choose your battles a little bit. Run that um, by me again. Now that, what was that again? The sweet wine is going to have more sugar than the dry wine. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, you can do alternatives. So there's a brand called Zevia. I don't know if you've ever seen it out there. Um, it's like a carbonated drink, but they have mixers. Um, Zevia uses stevia, which we had just talked about not long ago. And, you know, stevia being plant-based, so it's a good way not to consume extra sugars. And these zevias are mixers that you add in with, let's say, your liquor. Maybe you're using um, like a vodka or something. And so you would add this in. It's going to take place of maybe like a sugar drink that you would add into your alcohol. And it would limit your extra sugar that you're getting in, limit the calories and all of that. Well, I, I cannot find any drinks with stevia in it. I mean, it's, it, I know it's, I know it's more expensive than, than the other sweeteners. Okay. Yeah. So this Zevia, uh, I believe you can buy it at Giant Eagle and it's going to come in these little cans and in, um, I think you can buy, it, I think it's a pack of four cans maybe together and they're mixers. So you could probably ask, you know, in, in the, hmm. 
in the beverage section if they uh, they carry it in there, or if they carry it, you know, in the pop section, wherever it may be. But I know that they do have them out there and they're really good alternative. Instead okay. of having like, you know, instead of having juice with your vodka, you would have this mixer with your vodka. You know, you're allowed to have vodka with it. <laughs> we'll say vodka is definitely lower calories than some of the okay. other options out there. Or they uh, have, you know, those canned drinks now. Um, I believe some of them are like high noon, all those seltzers that actually have less calories in them. Okay. I, I, you know, I've looked everywhere for Stevia drinks and there's just I'm going to so... take you grocery shopping with me. Okay. All right. <laughs> that might be a fun Let's program. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay. I know. Yep. All right. I guess it's time for another break. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Okay, folks, welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Uh, this is the last segment of our segment of our show. We have 13 minutes, Serene, so we're going to pick your brain. <laughs> hey, listen, I just had my husband bring in something that we had talked about. It's a Zevia mixer. Okay. It's in my fridge. Okay. So it's a ginger beer mixer. So okay. all you have to do instead of getting the ginger beer and the other, you know, items that you would add is then you just take this and you add um, your alcohol to it and then you have mm -hmm. a drink and then it's zero calories, zero grams of sugar, um, zero grams of <laughs> sodium, zero grams of fat. Um, and it's made with organic stevia leaf extract. Wow. Okay. I'll get some now. Did he get that at Giant Eagle or did you? Yes. Or? Okay. Gee, a commercial for Giant See? Eagle. There you go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I told you I'll take you to the grocery store. <laughs> okay, that might be fun. <laughs> okay. All right. No, I don't know where we're at. No. <laughs> how about how about the vodkas? Is there any particular vodka that, that you would want to drink um, with that uh, mixer? They're, they're going to be pretty similar. How they make it is pretty similar. So. It's all potatoes, isn't it? Or something? I forget how they make vodka. The starch. Uh, the starch, starch yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Brad. You're up. <laughs> so, how about um, how do you how do you uh, navigate the dessert uh, temptations? Do you have any recommendations for uh, just abstaining or moderation, or what's our plan? Yeah, that's great. Um, it depends on the person, and the reason I'm saying this is because I work with so many people who are interested in you know losing weight or maintaining the weight loss, and they all have kind of a different take on it. You know, some will say if I don't eat anything, like I'm just going to lose it. I have to have something. And some will say, if I take one bite, that's the end of it for me. I can't stop. So <laughs> it depends. It really does depend on your personality and how you view it. Now we want you to, you know, work with us or work with a counselor to kind of get, get into learning how to have things in moderation. Cause that really is the key having in moderation. So if you feel like, Oh, I really want to have this, you know, just maybe a few bites, or if I'm having pumpkin pie, just a small sliver of the pumpkin pie, and then feeling satisfied with that. So a lot of times practicing that mindful eating, which if you don't know much about mindful eating, you can Google it a little bit, but what it is, is just being very attentive, very alert to how your, you know, food tastes, how, um, you know, the, the smells, the texture, all of that. So that way you're more satisfied. Uh, and what we see is people maybe eat in front of the TV or, you know, eat when they're around a lot of people and they don't really know how their food tastes. So practicing that mindful eating, especially when it comes to desserts, really helps keep it in check and keep it in moderation. Hmm. I don't know. You start eating a piece of pie, man. It's really hard to turn that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It is. It is. Now, the best time to have that piece of pie, though, is after you had a well-balanced meal right? So kind of thinking of your okay. plate as half your plate being vegetables, okay. a quarter of it grains or starches and a quarter of it protein. If you have a balanced plate, then afterwards you're feeling satisfied and you don't have as much room for dessert before you start to feel very uncomfortable. Hmm. So that's the key. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Any tips for what we can do around, in, around the holidays that isn't centered on food? I think that's a wonderful question and one that I do encourage people, you know, try 5Ks. There's so much fun. I know some of my family members this year did a turkey trot and it was a lot of fun for them because they, you know, were doing it together. That was probably the most exciting thing. You know, each one of them had a goal of how, you know, how much, um, how fast I should say they wanted to, to do this turkey trot in. 
but doing those activity related things around the holidays, especially is really fun way to still have your gatherings, but not surround it with food. Um, there's Stark Parks right now. So just bundle up a little bit, go to the Stark Parks. You know, that fresh air is really good for our, our bodies, our mental health, all of that. Um, one of the Stark Parks actually has like a mindfulness walk. They have a big arch when you walk in and it says, I think mindfulness on it, I believe when I saw it. Uh, so it's just kind of, you know, there's, there's really good activities around us locally. And especially with those 5Ks, you don't have to run them. You can walk them. And they have a lot coming up this month around the holidays. I know there's like um, a Santa one, a Jingle Bell one. So it's just a blast. If it's too cold for you to go outside, you know, trying some dance classes. I know there's a couple of dance studios locally. Um, some painting classes are a really fun way. There's a lot of painting classes locally. Um, a fun way to still gather with your friends, your family members, but not surrounded around food. Hmm. Okay. What about, um, you know, you've talked a lot about involving your kids in preparing meals. Mm -hmm. um, what advice can you give families to try to get them to be a little more mindful of what they consume too and maybe a little bit healthier fare? Yes, yeah. Um, I think sometimes what people forget about is that your kids do watch you in every aspect of life, right? But especially when it comes to the food and they're going to take the habits that they see you do and want to mimic that. So if they see you snacking on, um, you know, chips, they're going to want to snack on chips. If they see you snacking on vegetables, they're going to want to snack on vegetables. I don't, I don't know how many three-year-olds, you know, that absolutely love salad, but that's my daughter. My husband and I really enjoy eating salads and she loves salads. The other night at 10 30 at night, she decided she was hungry and wanted to eat a salad at 10 30. So, uh, it, they really do mimic your, your behaviors. Um, so showing them how to eat a healthy meal during the holidays, showing them how to make it balanced how to make it, uh, you know, incorporate those vegetables in, but really get them involved in, in preparing the meals, you know, to a safe extent, um, preparing, if you're doing any desserts, make it fun for them, but show them, hey, we're gonna do applesauce because it's healthier. So that way they, they have this mindset from a young age, how to eat healthy and how to incorporate these healthy things daily. Hmm. It's amazing. To 1030 at night, a child three years old wants to eat a salad. That's just amazing. Yeah, we do a lot of smoothies in our household too. So she loves putting spinach in her smoothies. It's just a fun activity for kids. You know, they, they see you cooking all the time and they really want to get involved. Um, you know, my family being from Jordan, we, we prepare a lot of Arabic foods. So my daughter is three and she'll roll grape leaves with my mom or stuff eggplant or zucchini with my mom because it's just such a fun thing for them to see you do and they want to get involved so it's a great activity for kids amazing gosh salad at 10 30 <laughs> <laughs> you got the only kid that's ever done that i think <laughs> i don't think there's another kid in the world if she's the one that asked for it that's the funny thing she oh asked God, for salad funny i love it <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know where we're at, Brad. Where are we? <laughs> well, I didn't ask about, um, I, I've got one other question I, I didn't ask about, about quality of sleep. I don't think people realize how important sleep and rest is in, um, in weight management or just life management. Can you touch on that? You're right. If you've ever talked to somebody who uses a CPAP machine, um, you know, if they have sleep apnea and they need a machine to help them breathe at night, they'll tell you, I mean, the quality of sleep they get after using one of those machines is life-changing to them. They have so much more energy. So it's kind of like, you know, through the holidays, we get really busy and we kind of forget about our sleep. So it's kind of like the equivalent to somebody that needs one of those sleep machines, not using the machine. And they just kind of feel very bogged down, very tired all the time. You know, our bodies don't make the best decisions when we're tired. You know, we, we don't want you to fall asleep behind the wheel. But then in regards to not getting enough sleep, we affect our hormones that way. So we have two hormones that regulate satiety and hunger. So when we don't get enough sleep, the hormone that tells us that we're full or that we're satisfied actually lessens. And the hormone that tells us that we are hungry actually increases. So if you kind of are a little bit more mindful and pay attention throughout the holidays, if you think, oh, you know, I just ate, why am I still hungry? Or I just ate an hour and a half ago. I shouldn't still be hungry. A lot of times that's because your hormones are so off balance. So just like you're going to plan your meals, you're going to plan your activities with your family members, plan your sleep, as silly as that sounds, really plan your sleep. And if you're thinking, oh, I'm so busy, I got to wrap all these Christmas gifts, buy, Christmas, buy bags, you know, try to find alternatives of what you could do to help you get 
that sleep because it is super, super important to help you not gain weight throughout the holidays and just help your body feel rested. It's really good for our mental health as well. So it's just, I mean, very important. So plan your sleep. That's my advice. Hmm. Amazing. See, I hadn't thought about the CPAP thing, but, um, you know, I look at those units and I think it's very cumbersome to sleep with those. And I just, you know, some of them are more sophisticated. I just I can't even imagine try, trying to sleep with a CPAP thing on your face. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but the people do sleep. They'll tell you I sleep, but they don't hear it. That's the best thing. They say my partner will hear, but I don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> But they feel, I mean, they feel so great. So I'm sure it's a good trade-off, you know, for family members, hmm. you know, when they hear those machines versus, you know, how that person feels the next day. Uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. What are we going to do about planning ahead when we go to a holiday party? Yes. Try to, you know, if you're at a party, you know, look at the options that are around, try to see, okay, you know, what, what are some healthier options? Or sometimes I encourage people to kind of think of it as like an appetizer plate. You know, if you have so many things you want to try, you know, think of it as just an appetizer. I want, or a sampler. I want to sample this. I want to sample this. I want to sample this. So that way you're not, you know, overwhelmed or you don't put too much food in your plate and then feel bad, you know, throwing it all mm -hmm. out. So if you're having a party earlier in the day, you know, maybe stick to a lighter fare at that party. If you're having something, you know, at a dinner time, that's where you would have your, you know, maybe your heavier meal, but still making sure that it's balanced. And if you're worried somebody's not going to have those vegetables that we talked about, whether it's a salad, whether it's roasted Brussels sprouts, take it with you. You know, that's a great way. If you're kind of worried, oh, I don't know if they're going to have anything healthy, you know, take it with you. I'm sure they'll love for you to bring some healthy treats, you know, with you when you go to a, a, a gathering. Interesting. Take your own food, huh? <laughs> I don't like your food, so I'm bringing my own. But think of it as like, <laughs> oh, you know, I brought I brought a covered dish with me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> okay, multiple parties in one day. How do we space out our food intake? And should we avoid going to multiple parties in one day? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to avoid it. No, um, just kind of eat small. You know. I always tell people, don't go the whole day. If you know you have you know, some gatherings, maybe one's in the afternoon, one's in the evening, don't skip breakfast. You tend to skip breakfast, then you you know, kind of set yourself up for failure. You're gonna consume more food at the first party, more food at the second party. Mm -hmm. So you know, making sure you have your water with you, that's super important, just so you don't overeat. And then kind of you know, put yourself a little bit of food and then step away from wherever the food is being served from. So that way you, Kind of remember, okay, I have another party to go to. I don't want to overdo this. You know, I feel satisfied. Um, and practice that mindful eating. You know, really enjoy what food is on your plate. Interesting. Okay, we step on a scale and we're not happy with our weight. What's the next move? Do we call you? Or... Reach out to me. Yeah. <laughs> Reach out to me. Um, okay. It's it's the holidays are hard, and sometimes you know it takes a lot from us just to make it through the holidays. So reach out to us if you need any assistance. Um, you know, even in your personal life, consider finding somebody who can hold you accountable during the holiday season or after the holiday season to help you, you know, lose any weight that you've gained. Um, you know, do the tracking that we had talked about to help you minimize that weight gain, you know, downloading an app. Um, and then if you need any suggestions, you can always reach out to me. Um, but, you know, set small goals for yourself. You know, maybe I'm going to cut back on the sugar. Or if I drink pop, maybe I'm going to limit the pop to three days a week instead of seven days a week. So setting those small goals really does help help a lot. Okay, I think we're out of time. Um, <laughs> how do we get a hold of you? <laughs> you can call Mercy Weight Management, 330-588-4854, or you can visit our website, cantonmercy.org forward slash weight loss. Um, we'll be back in the office on Monday, so you can give us a call starting Monday. Okay. Hey, thanks for coming by. Thanks Serene, for having me. It's a blast. The Wari Christian. I love it when you come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, registered and licensed dietitian, weight management dietitian at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital. We'd like to remind our listeners if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, Studio Arts and Glass, and Genuine Appraisals and Liquidations. As always, we thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll be talking to you next Friday, same time on 1480 WHBC. Thank you again, Serene.
Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. It's good to see you guys. I'm going to go shopping with you at the grocery. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. That could, be, that could probably be in a waking moment to me. <laughs> hey, but you, you may learn some new things. I probably go home and look at all the stuff I bought and thought, now what am I going to do with this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's uh, worth it. I have a lot of patients that request that. All right, you should have a yeah. you should have a walkthrough seminar, maybe three or four people at a time. See, that's uh, what we were trying to do, but I think uh, the like all the legality issues, you know, with yeah. the hospital, we weren't able to do that. So I did record a video that I filmed in our studio at Mercy about you know some healthy things from the grocery store. Okay. Um, but if you do like salads, my husband brought this in when he brought the mixer, so I could show you guys. So. This is Bolt House Farms. It's a Greek yogurt salad dressing. And yeah. I have gotten almost all my patients to switch over to this. It's only 45 calories for the two tablespoons, but because it's made with Greek yogurt, it has just a little bit of protein in it. But the Greek yogurt is what gives it the creaminess without adding the fat. And that is so, so, so important mm. because <laughs> what we see is like ranch dressings, anything like that, is super high in fat. Yeah, sure. So I got, I'm, I mean, most of my patients now use this Greek yogurt dressing. So there's so many good things now in the grocery store. We'll have to plan a shopping trip together. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I Thank can't you. promise. I can't promise that you won't spend a lot of money, but. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bank account with you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks All right for I, your guys time. I, I appreciate you coming by. Thanks for your time. So. Good to Thank see you. you. Have Bye -bye. a good holiday. Happy holidays and you stuff. Too. Okay. You guys too.